Today, you'll learn how to use procedural masks to make tiling textures in Quixel Mixer. So for this material, we'll start by adding a surface layer. And I downloaded this rough marble texture from the online section to search that. Then I'll disable the base layer since we'll use the marble as our base. I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. And I'll add a solid layer. Now I just want to use this for displacement, so I'll disable the albedo color, the mellowness, and the roughness. And I'll keep some of the marble displacement, so I'll just lower the opacity a little bit. And then I'll right click and add mask stack, or I could go down here, add mask stack. And now in our mask stacks, we have two different types of things we can add. We have a mask component, or we have a mask modifier. And now in our mask stacks, we have two different types of things we can add. We have a mask component, or we have a mask modifier. The components basically add or generate something and add it to our mask stack, while the modifiers will modify what's already in the mask stack. So some modifiers we have are solid, which just makes a solid color, map, which uses a texture, you could either load in a new texture, or you could use a Megascans texture, or you could use one from one of the layers you already have. Next, we have different types of noise, some different patterns, such as square, circle, checker, and gradient. You got normal, you got your curvature, and you got a gradient. On your modifiers, you have brightness contrast to increase or decrease the brightness or contrast of your previous ones in the stack. You got clamp, which will set a minimum and a maximum value. You got invert, which will invert your mask. You got normalize, which will normalize it into a zero to one range. You got gradient remap, which will remap it to whatever you set it to. You got posturize, which will limit the amount of shades. You got blur. You got bevel, which is a little bit similar to blur, where it'll smooth out the sharp edges. You got circular transform, which can make circle patterns. You got scatter, which will duplicate your mask many times and then scatter around. And you got projection where you can change how it's projected. So here we'll just start by using a noise pattern. And we use whirly one, which if we raise the threshold, you can see it has a very sharp and angular look to this type of noise, which is good for a rock style. Other patterns include simplex, purlin. Then we got different versions of whirly, such as two and three but we'll just use really one. Next, we might want to add another layer, another solid layer, and we'll raise the threshold, but we're going to wrap this to underline, and we'll add mask stack, and I'll choose curvature, and now I can choose default curvature. I can change it to edges only. So you'll see on sharp edges, it'll add a light gray color. Next, I can add another surface layer. You can go with a grassy one or a moss. I'm going to use Nordic moss here and I'll raise it with the threshold. Next, we can use our mask to add cartoony flowers to it, which doesn't really go with this texture, but I'm just showing you different things you can use. So we can add a solid layer, maybe make it like a bright yellow, and increase the threshold. Then we can go right-click, add mask stock, then add mask component, and we can use a pattern circle, and we'll have only one repetition or no repetitions. Then we'll click here to add a modifier and we will use circular transform, which makes it look kind of like petals. We'll add some more petals, maybe a little bit of a swirl. Nothing crazy, just maybe a little bit. Next, we'll add another circle for the center. I'll change that to circle. And then we can add a projection and we'll use this to shrink the size of that. So we'll go to freeform and I can alt click on this, which will make it so that it will only affect the one below it. So it will only affect the circle. And then we can change the scale, but the circle is completely overwriting what's beneath it. So I can change the circles blend mode to add. And then we can change the scale of the circle. And then we can add a clamp to make sure that it doesn't displace too much. And then finally, we can add a scatter and we can change the size range, make it smaller. Then we can 
make them more consistent in size. Maybe make some more. Maybe we can look here and maybe just wrap that to underline some. Not all the way. And blur it. Now we got some flowers. Maybe we can actually duplicate this layer, change the color, and we can have multiple different types. Duplicate that again. Maybe add some pink. And then for each of these, we can go to their stack and scatter. We can change the random seed, which will change where it's randomly placed. Random seed. Maybe we'll lower the density of, say, the pink. After we added our flowers, maybe we can go ahead and add some liquidine to add some puddles. If we bring up the threshold, well, we'll see that the place is completely flooded. So maybe we'll add a noise layer so that we can have some slight variation in the height to make puddles instead of a complete th flood. And we'll increase the frequency so that we have more smaller puddles. And then we can lower the threshold some on here. Maybe something like that. Then we can increase the radius on the moist setting, which will make it so that everything looks moist. Basically making a wider range of stuff moist around it. Now you can obviously do other things such as going into our noise layer and having a different pattern. Maybe we could instead use pattern square and then it would have become these stone tiles or it could you use checker and then had it in checkered patterns. And if you inverted it, you could have the other side if you had two layers or a gradient. And if you want to maybe make bricks, you could get the square at an offset and change the size by the amount of repetitions. Maybe use the jitter with the brightness jitter so that you can change the range of how high each of these are. So now some of them are completely underneath the moss and some are partly underneath. You can adjust the range. As you can see, there's a lot of flexibility in this. So if you like this video and want to see more videos on 3D, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you.